Rishi Sunak says we're facing a profound economic crisis, but what does that actually mean? Is it really profound? Well, let's have a look at some of the numbers, starting with this. This is giving you a sense of whether we might well be contracting uh, or expanding. If anything is in the blue area, we are kind of getting bigger as an economy. If it's in the red area, we are contracting. It's basically a recession warning. You can see the UK's line going down into that recession territory. But here's the striking thing. It's not just the UK, it's other countries as well. A lot of the Eurozone, for instance, the US, they're all basically the same shape. So, you know, do they have profound economic crises as well? Perhaps they do, but it's not just us. We're not alone. Um, and also, there are issues that are going deeper, that are going into households' pockets right now. Mortgages, for instance, are getting much more expensive because of higher interest rates. Uh, right now, if you're taking out a two-year fixed rate mortgage, you're paying potentially the highest amount as a percentage of your uh, income that we've seen since the late 1980s. That's a mortgage burden. The higher that is, the bigger the squeeze. And the same thing again for energy, OK? So this is energy prices, uh, those bills. And even after the energy price guarantee, we're still talking about the biggest squeeze on energy uh, spending that we've seen essentially ever. That goes back to the 1950s. So these two things add up and they mean as a result we are getting less well off as a nation. Our collective standard of living, our ability to pay, our net worth is going down and you get a sense of that with this chart. This is a kind of a measure of that collective net worth versus how much what we tend, typically tend to spend our money on and have a look at how that has gone down. That is the impact of higher energy prices mean we are basically poorer as a nation. And, you know, it's not just that that we've been focusing on recently, is it? It's also growth. And this shows you productivity, one of the best measures of growth, output per hour. Up until the financial crisis, it was rising, rising, rising. But look at what happened since. It essentially flatlined. So many of our problems at the moment come back to that chart. And no prime minister recently has been able to deal with it. Uh, actually, no chancellor either, I should say. And look at this, 10-year bond year. Now, this is one of the charts we've looked at quite a lot recently. This is kind of what's going on in markets, what's it kind of defined Liz Truss's time in office. That went up very sharply indeed. But two things to note. First of all, it was starting to rise before Liz Truss came into office. So that predated her time there. You can't blame it all on her. And it's starting to come down in the last few weeks. That suggests that could help Rishi Sunak when it comes to paying off the bills. Second bit of good news, um, this is wholesale gas prices. And again, you can see they've been very volatile, going up to very high levels recently. But look at what's happened in the last few weeks. They have come down, down to 35p a therm. So some good news there. Things could be a little bit better than many people had expected. That doesn't mean we're not facing an economic crisis, but perhaps it means that this man is very keen to underline there's some tough news and maybe tough spending cuts to come.